Arms? Won't stop him. Thank you. Well, we certainly shan't get nearly such a good dinner at the Straining Arms. Dinner? Already? <laughs> I've never eaten such a fantastic lunch in my life. I shall put on weight. <laughs> Can I have another gin and tonic to help it all go down? So, why go there? The Straining Arms, I mean. Darling, we've already been through all this. The lawyer chap says we've got to go very carefully, absolutely not rush our fences with this bloke, in case he refuses to sell at the last moment. We don't want a big social scene. Much easier with no girls around. I'm sure I would have been a help. I would have charmed him, whoever he is. Yes, I'm sure you would, Annabelle, and that's exactly why we're going to the Australian Arms. We're trying to buy a chain of restaurants, not spreading the permissive society of Scotland. <laughs> I was only thinking of Kirsty. I'm sure she's already prepared a magnificent feast. No, Kirsty won't care. She's used to putting up with things. That's just the point. She takes such trouble, and we're up here so seldom. It seems rather unfair. I still don't see why we couldn't have fed you all here, and then you could have hived off into the library. Well, she's got you and Annabelle and Charlie and Jock to feed. That should keep her happy. And I shall be back quite soon. Darling, this is a business dinner, not an all-night session. Let her make some sandwiches for when I come back. <laughs> I'm sure my mother won't be upset, Lady Strainy. As Sir Fergus says, she's well used to ways here at Glen Strainy. Oh, I wasn't suggesting she couldn't cope. Kirsty's marvellous. Well, there's no need to worry then, Lady Strainy. Exactly. A drink up, Doctor. We really ought to be going if I'm to be back to enjoy the fun here. It'll be much more fun when you do come back. <laughs> yes, do come back, please. You will bring him back for a drink, won't you, darling? It's very kind of you, Lady Strenny, but uh, I have to be up early in the morning. I'll just go straight on to Kiltorum. But Doctor, we really ought to be off. Uh, business is business. Bye, darling. Be good. You too, Annabel. Hands off, John. He's a nice Scottish boy and won't understand your wicked son well. Oh, bye, darling. Best of luck. I do hope it goes well. Thank you, darling. Bye. Goodbye. I do hope we see you soon here again. Thank you, Lady Strainy. Thank you for the drink. It's so embarrassing. I never know quite what to call him. <laughs> What's wrong with Torquil? You will call me Lady Strainy. He's quite something, isn't he? I mean, forget Jock. I wouldn't mind getting my wicked southern hands on him. <laughs> hey, don't distract me. Kirsty really likes us to be on time, although she never says so. And I think she may be producing souffle. Fancy the devastating talk will be in Kirsty's son. Do you think this dress is too low? For Kirsty's taste, I mean. Mm -hmm. I must say, darling, you have a divine bedroom. And a four-poster. Oh, heaven, where did you get it? I didn't. It was here already, like everything else. Aren't I lucky? Annabelle, it doesn't matter about Kirsty, but won't you freeze to death? This is June. This is Scotland. The dining room is icy. Kirsty doesn't light the fire there in the summer. Oh, what are you going to wear then? A tartan shawl and bed socks? <laughs> I am not. Hardly my style. <laughs> I'm wearing that trouser suit you're sitting on. Oh. You remember it. Last year's Cassie Roberts. But it's good for Scotland because it's covered up. Mm, it's pretty. It's hardly very Scottish. Why didn't you buy yourself a special warm Scottish trousseau? Too extravagant for a few weeks a year. I adore this coverlet, by the way. Isn't it fantastic? I think Fergie's mother embroidered it. Kirsty told me. It's awfully well done. Imagine the patience. To say nothing of the time. Oh. I'd never get around to it. Of course, you did live up here all year round. How romantic. I just see her here embroidering away in her tower. But I can't see you at it. <laughs> Nor can I. No. I adore it for a holiday. Who wouldn't? But when I'm not on holiday, I do like to get on with things. Oh, dinner plates limited. Exactly. Your little hobby, Fergie calls it. He'll learn. That little hobby made a handsome profit last year. Besides, I enjoy it. Anyway, it's not just that. I like the feeling of being in the centre of things. Fergie and I agree about that. We both adore living in London. Strain is just a wonderful kind of extra house. If I were you, that talk will would be another lovely bonus as well. <laughs> but I am not you, Annabel. I am a newly married and a happily married woman. Although he is rather gorgeous. <laughs> and I can't think how the worthy Kirsty came to have such a smashing offspring. A turret bathroom. Better and better. <laughs> We've got four <laughs> turrets. One of them used to be used as Fergie's nursery. His mother didn't like the noise of children. How depressing of her. Oh, Fergie didn't care. He says he had the happiest childhood in the world here at Strainy. Alone? Oh, how odd. I don't think of Fergie as the solitary type somehow. Well, I suppose he had Torquil to play with. He says they always shared everything as children. After all, Kirsty was his nanny. 
Now, Davina, don't tell me these are yours. Oh, feel this silk and this hat. <laughs> My mother-in-law, oh, please leave them alone. Oh. And, well, I've just never got around to sorting them. Oh, I love this hat. Can I have it? No, you cannot. Oh, God, it's nearly eight o'clock. We must go down. Jock will be here and even Charlie won't change by now. Besides, I promised Kirsty. At least we must dress up after dinner. Charades, any <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, I say, Charlie, my poor old Kirsty. Kirsty, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. It was meant for Jock. Are you all right, Kirsty? Yeah. Yes, your ladyship, never worry. I'll just be taking this tray out. Oh, Kirsty, your <laughs> dress. Oh, you horror. Black shows everything. Just like yourself, Annabelle. <laughs> Kirsty, shall I come and sort of mop it for you? No, Miss Benson, I'll manage easily. I'll just bring in the coffee, then I'll wash it off. I you sure? leave her, Annabelle. She'll manage. She has to manage everything herself. Kirsty hates to be fussed over. Well, how can she mop her own back? I should really do it for her. It's all my fault. <laughs> Are you good at mopping backs, darling? Charlie, you should keep your meringues to yourself another time. <laughs> but I must say, she's fantastic, old Kirsty. Of course, I've known her for years, and she's always exactly the same. She's never any older, always smiling, never cross. Even when Fergie and I used to play ghastly tricks on her as children. Mm, yes, aren't I lucky? Oh, I know yeah. that. <laughs> Look, let's go and have coffee in the hall. She likes to clear the table and lay breakfast. Does Kirsty do everything, Davina? All the cooking and everything? She seems to prefer it that way. Oh, Mummy will be jealous. After all, we're only here now because of this business scheme of Fergie's about the restaurants. Otherwise, we'd have been back in London ages ago. I had to ring up Susie and plead with her to carry on for an extra week. But you're such a wonderful cook yourself, darling. Dinner plates would never have got off the ground without you. Have you taught Kirsty some of your marvellous dishes? Oh, hardly. I wouldn't dare. Besides, it's out strictly for London and business. I suppose dinner plates food wouldn't be quite right in Scotland somehow. All that tarama salata. <laughs> Not quite the haggis touch. Quite apart from the fact that the shops in Strainy weren't exactly bulging with cods row when I last visited them. All the same, you've made me feel guilty. I was going to help her with a coffee. Why don't you all go? I bet Kirsty's kitchen I'm is sure she mine. wouldn't like it. Besides, Annabelle would tell everybody at dinner plates that I was a stranger in my own kitchen. Will you do some drinks, Jock? Mm, certainly. Annabelle? Mm. Lady, I just thought I'd help with the coffee. It's the agar. I'm sorry, it's slow. No, no, I didn't mean that at all. The tray is all ready, my lady. Oh, oh Lady Caroline and Fergus. That's you, that's your son. That's her ladyship. That's Torquil. That's Sir Fergus at the age of ten. <laughs> that was her favourite picture, she said, the four of us. The frame is silver. She gave it to me. I keep them all. A really happy photograph, she called it. You really should have an electric cooker or something. We have oh, one in London. Be worth the expense. It was good enough for her ladyship all those years. Not for the few weeks you were here. If you were ever here for a good wee while now, well, Kirsty wouldn't mind a fine new kitchen to cook for you. Well, that's a bargain. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely to spend more time here? But we just can't. Sir Fergus is so busy in London, and I have my own little business. Now you leave me here to bring the coffee. I'm happier doing things myself. The netting rats, so we're never short of a bit of smoked salmon. <laughs> Dismissed! <laughs> I'm not allowed to do a thing, which I must say is heaven. Long live Kirsty. Will you get me a brandy, Jock? Mm. Certainly. You know, she had such an awful time from the old lady, you'd think she'd be glad of a rest. Old Lady Caroline, I bet she was an absolute dragon. I adore the dress. <laughs> All that floating black and arm showing. Augustus John, I think. There we go. She doesn't look a dragon. Well, I suppose she was quite young then. She has quite a look of you, Davina. Fergie says she really ran the estate, hardly ever moved from here in case some detail escaped her eagle eye. How oh, unlike one. Ah, oh, well, you run dinner plates with a fairly eagle eye, darling. You've been listening to Susie. <laughs> no, it's all the 
feudal stuff that seems so terribly far away. I don't want anyone to curtsy to me. To tell the truth, even Kirsty rather embarrasses me with her kindness. Mm. Late Sir James was a very different cup of tea. Fergie absolutely adored his father. He does sound awfully sweet. Yes, nicest old boy in the world. Sitting in his chair with his whiskey and soda all day long, telling long, boring stories about fishing to anyone who would listen. Never actually did a thing. It's Lady Caroline Kirsty always talks about with such respect. Hardly ever mentions Sir James. Her ladyship, this, that and the other. I do think Kirsty must be lonely here. Nonsense, she's got a son, as you well know. Of course she has, Torquil. We all played together. She did have a dim and downtrodden husband. He gave up the ghost quite early on, I seem to remember. She never mentions him at all. What time will Sir Fergus be back from the meeting, my lady? Tenish. And he'll be wanting something to eat. Sandwiches. Sandwiches? I could cut them. Don't bother, Kirsty. No bother at all. You're both here so seldom. It's a pleasure to have you. I thought maybe a proper meal. Sir Fergus just had sandwiches. Oh, how oh, oh, sweet. Oh. Oh. Shall I open a window, eh? Oh, don't kill it. Oh, no, pretty wee thing. I think we ought to let it out. It means Kirsty won't do it any harm. I adore butterflies. I always think they're so pathetic indoors. It knows Kirsty won't do it any harm. God, do stand still, Annabelle. Right, I'll have that. Now then. Oh, God, I hope she doesn't come in and see us. <laughs> now that is clever. Mm. Mm. Charlie, you really can't put soda with that malt whiskey. Fergus will have a fit. I'm having a fit. Four and two. Uh, one, two, three, four. I quite like myself with a bun. Hey, do you think this is grand enough? Wonderful. <laughs> think you got me, Charlie. Double four. One, two, three, four. Five. Right, we're both female. Uh, we can see that. We are female, and one of us is alive, and one of us is dead. <laughs> you both look pretty alive to me. The point, Charlie, is that conversation. You've got to listen. Oh, yes, do be quiet. I want to concentrate. <laughs> Right. Take this. I'm fainting from the weight of my devotion. It's Mary, Queen of Scots, the hat's a crown. Take this book, I said. I have serious things to do. My men to talk to. Oh, yes, she is Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary, Queen of Scots and Elizabeth. Oh. No, uh, Cleopatra and Iris or whatever. <laughs> Pardon, Lower. I must be treated with respect I deserve. Respect! <laughs> Respect all day long! I think I'll have all the people round by to come to kiss my toe. Oh. You first. Lady Macbeth and somebody. The nurse. No, no, that's Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, my lady. There now. A nice Scottish breakfast. Mm. Porridge, cream, <coughs> boiled eggs. Oh, Kirsty, I couldn't possibly just take it away. You should eat up, your ladyship. You're too pale and thin. I always get much too fat when I'm here. I'm going to be here the whole summer. I should be like a pig. Honestly, I never eat breakfast in London. Besides, there isn't any orange juice. I've asked cook twice. How fresh orange is absolutely unknown in Scotland. What's her ladyship complaining about now? I'm trying to make her eat a little, Sir James. You should eat more, darling. I'm quite happy with the way I am. Don't you like me the way I am? <laughs> Kirsty, go. Morning, darling. Excuse me, my lady. Hector wants to know. Shall he be staking the lilies this morning? I have the faintest idea. Oh, tell him to get on with you. Nothing too stiff. They must be natural. Maybe your ladyship could find time to tell him just the way you like things done. I'm quite happy with the way you are, but could you eat a little more while you're here? 
One just has to be firm with Kirsty. Oh, absolutely, darling. No one can ever make you do anything you don't want to do. Well, I'm not having my own way about spending the summer here. I wanted to go to Lutuke. Not again, darling. Is it raining? A bit. No, not again, darling. Even those butterflies can't face the weather. They're always coming into my bedroom. Yes, it's the warmth of the house. Too hot. I love you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, my lady. Would you like me to stop now? No, your company for me. I didn't imagine lilies would grow so well in Scotland. Oh, lilies do very well at Glenstrini. We have lilies at home. My old home, I mean. My parents' home. Uh, that'll be in the south. Yes. I would have thought it would have been too cold for lilies. Well, well the castle walls provide shelter. But aren't the walls cold? <laughs> How will they keep the wind away? I see them as keeping things in, not keeping things off. <laughs> Aye, that could be so. It's an awful strong castle. Parts of it are very old. It has a great history. Hmm? So Kirsty tells me. Is there something your ladyship is wanting? I just love a cup of black coffee. Oh, was there not enough coffee at your breakfast, my dear? <laughs> no, the breakfast coffee was perfect. It's just that I can't seem to wake up this morning. It's the good air here. Everyone sleeps well at Glen Street. <laughs> A nice biscuit, perhaps? No, no biscuit. What a marvellous range. Isn't it terribly old-fashioned? How does Cook manage? She does her best, my lady. I know, she does wonderfully. Please don't upset her, but shouldn't she have an archer or something? Oh, it wouldn't be worth it. Cook wouldn't want to put you and Sir James to an unnecessary expense when you're not here all the time. I'll talk to Sir James. If you were living here all the time, I'm sure Cook would love one of the new Argus. Is it still raining? No, it's a lovely day. I'll be on the terrace. Hector's down by the lock. Is he? But he says maybe it's too bright for the fish. What about is he? Morning, my lady. I'm disturbing you again, Hector. Well, your ladyship is very welcome. Perhaps I'm disturbing the fish. So, it is me that's disturbing the fish. Ah, uh, no, my lady. It's far too bright for the fish. I didn't really want to come because of that. But, uh, Kirsty told me I was getting under her feet. Comes me not. Ah, at least it's not raining. I can't bear the rain here. It's so depressing. Of course, you like it. So does Sir James. Good for the fish. 
Hi, milady. Hector, are you sure I'm not disturbing you? Oh, quite sure. Then do teach me how to cast. Sir James keeps saying he's going to do it, but he never has time, always glooming away in that old estate office. <laughs> and if there aren't any fish, it won't make any difference. Yes, my lady. Okay. I'm sure your ladyship will enjoy it once you have the knack. That's it. Hold that there with your right hand. Now pull this line with your left. That's it. Back we go. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Mind your heart there. That's it. Now, just gently back. And out we go. <laughs> That's lovely. Pick it up, slave. She is Cleopatra. You see the hat's a crown. Where's your ass? <laughs> oh, I think it's something more Scottish. <laughs> Queen Victoria and her gillian. Yeah. Annabelle's trying her damnedest to give us a Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah, well, uh... You a wee drop of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> No, Kirsty, I couldn't face anything this afternoon. Will Sir James be back for tea, my lady? Oh, no, he won't be back till late. He's gone to Perth. Didn't he tell you? Hector wanted to know. He saddled the horses. Oh. Oh, well, I might as well. I suppose Hector could ride with me. from straining. Nothing to hold us down. <laughs> I will have the horses to attend to. We shouldn't gallop them too fast. Old Diamond here is a bad tendon. Would you like to be free? I can my place. Oh, freedom has to be snatched, that's what I say. And gulped like fresh air. I love to be out here. Alone. Alone, Hector? With you. My lady. He's off to London next week. I Kirsty told me. Kirsty wants to go and see her sister, the one who's ill. Maybe that's inconvenient, dear ladyship. Oh, poor Kirsty. She must be allowed to go and see her sister. She works so hard. Besides, with Sir James away, there won't be so much to do. His clothes and that kind of thing. That's very good of your ladyship. I know she can work extra hard this week to make up. We'll really sort out those old cupboards. Oh, I never quite had the energy. <laughs> hmm. Yes? Uh, no. This would look awful nice on your ladyship's black dress. Oh, that's from work. This lace isn't at all the right style. As your ladyship says. Oh, pick it up for me, Kirsty. Could you put it away? The press is me. Thought maybe for the tenants' tea party. Certainly not. Yes, my lady. Oh, bravo! No! No, no, I won't put up with that from you, English whore. Get out! I won't get out without taking him with me. Get out, I say! Just it's best you go. You mean it's best I haven't come in? A pretty sight. Away from here, woman, unless you want to be killed. It's you who should be killed for lying with a whore. Will you get out of this room? When I've had my say. Why did you take him when you had the best man in the world for your own? If you dare to speak to the layout. Sir James wouldn't believe you. Wouldn't he? The word of a servant. I am not a servant where Sir James is concerned. I'm Kirsty. He's known me all his life. I've known you all my life, you skimming bitch, and I wouldn't believe I wanted Careful, to see you. Hector Mackay. I know you. The layout doesn't know you, but I do. You trapped oh, hold me. Hold your tongue. Now she's trapped you. She's a devil. Your sick sister, indeed. I was a fool. That you were a lustful fool. Get away from here, my lady. I think you should get away. I think you should both go away. No, it's you who should go, my lady. Get away now while you can. Oh, what a mess you're in. It needs making. Kirsty will soon see to that.
There, there now. Kirsty will look after you. Bed's all nice and soft now. All tidy and ready for you. And here's your breakfast. Well, are you going to tell him? What about a nice cup of coffee? You know how you love your coffee in the mornings. And your orange juice. I spoke to Cook about it. You've always hated me, haven't you? Resented me ever since I came into this house. I suppose you never wanted him to get married at all, your childhood friend. I'm sure we were all very happy when Sir James got married. We had thought maybe a Scottish young lady might have been more suitable. I know you've been looking at me, watching me. I'd hoped you'd be very happy with us here at Glenstring. God, oh, I loathe this house! This gold watchful house full of gold watchful servants! You weren't brought up here. It's only natural you should find it strange at first, with you always hurrying to London and leaving us. You didn't get to know our ways here. We tried to think of ways to please you. I don't know what to do. You should just go back to bed and rest now. Kirsty, stop this game. Come out with it. How are you going to tell him? When are you going to tell him? Here's your bed jacket. You mustn't get cold. I'm so tired. Oh, there, there. That's right. Your ladyship needs all your rest at a time like this. With the baby coming. I haven't told Sir James yet. It'll be nice to have a little one here again at Glen Streamy. Growing up here. Not in that horrid, dusty London, of course. Mother and child growing up here. As should be. Your ladyship's health won't permit many journeyings now, I'm thinking. We'll all take such good care of you here at Glen Stringy. You'll be in good hands here. Darling. Darling. <laughs> you all right? Kirsty? Good morning, Sir James. Not dressed? It's 11 o'clock? This is something new, isn't it? What about the dogs? Didn't you uh, take them for a run? I didn't feel too good this morning. Hector took the dogs out. Oh, oh good boy. I'm glad someone looked after them. Her ladyship hasn't been feeling too well these last few mornings. Kirsty has been looking after me. Well, now she can look after me for a change. God, I'm pleased to be back. Hmm, the air. You notice it at once. Kirsty, how about some coffee? How's Cook? Straight away, Sir James. You're all right, darling. I thought you must be all colour, not wanting to come to London. How was London? Exhausting. Everybody asked after you. And the flat? Not much as usual. Why do you ask? Same old flat. My window boxes. Same old window boxes. No, wait, very pretty. Pink and white. Very pretty. I like to imagine them. Mm-hmm. James, I'm going to have a baby. Oh, that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Kirsty, let you be the first to know. Kirsty was the first to know. May I offer my congratulations, Sir James? <laughs> Kirsty is very pleased to think there'll be a child at Glen Strainy again. Children? Children? Well, Kirsty and Hector are founding a family. Didn't you know? No. We should have told Lady Caroline. 
You should have told me. Ooh. Her ladyship will be wanting to do up the old nurseries. Oh, no, not that awful turret. Oh, it's a great turret. We had great games there as children, didn't we, Kiss? It's very convenient for babies. Oh, much too far away. Well, we'll see about that. We'll talk about it. Her ladyship has just told me she'll be giving up the London flat now, with the baby coming. I... <laughs> I can see you two have got it all worked out. No, I think I deserve a drink. Well, coffee after all this. <laughs> Well done, darling. Everything under control, as usual, Kirsty. Yes, Sir James. You feeling all right? I do my work, I hope. I like a woman who doesn't complain. I'm sure there's nothing to complain about. All present and correct in the servant hall. Is that it? Aye, Sir James. And elsewhere? Aye. No. That's good. I like to be master in my own house. It's only natural, Sir James. Every man does. Oh, by the way, you will see that her ladyship has everything she wants, won't you, Kirsty? We've got to pamper her now, haven't we? Yes, Sir James. She gets upset over little things. It's understandable that a woman in a type like this, isn't it? So they tell me. We've got to spoil her. Don't worry, Sir James. Kirsty will see to it. Orange juice, for example. Just the little things. Her ladyship has orange juice on her tree now, Sir James. Hector drove into Pell. Wonderful. Kirsty. I knew I could count on you. I'll be getting on with my work now, Sir James. Morning, old fellow. Hmm. <laughs> well, stop raining.
That went rather well. Yes. Um, Fergus's Bible, darling. Kirsty, Fergus's Bible. Yes, please. Thank you, Kirsty. Good boy. I haven't seen you this morning. Are you going to give Mummy a kiss? <laughs> Go on, Master Fergus, give your mother a kiss. Come on, darling. Hello, Joffre. To say good morning to her ladyship. What a charming sight. Morning, darling. Morning, James. Did you sleep better? Morning, Kirsty. Good morning. Good morning, Ophelia. Good morning, Ophelia. You're knocking me over. <laughs> I'll be down to the river. Plenty of fish rising. I thought this afternoon I might go down below the bridge. Can I come? I'm Torquil. We were going into Stony this afternoon, Fergie, to get your gum boots. Uh, what time would you like the boys ready, Sir James? Oh, about half past two, Kirsten. Will you take a photograph of me, Daddy? Certainly not. Break the camera. Besides, <laughs> <laughs> right, I've only got uh, one left. I'll tell you what, I'll take a photograph of all four of you. How about that? Mummy and you, go along. Oh, and Kirsty, Torquil on the ground. Good. <laughs> now. I want to sit beside Kirsty. Now, Master Fergus, I don't want any of your silliness, otherwise you don't go fishing with your father. Now. Uh, what a pretty sight. Smile, darling. Smile, Fergus, don't sulk. Good. Now, I want a really happy photograph. Remember the 2K, darling? They're opening it up again. Master Fergus has a call today, Sir James. I'm afraid he got it from talk call and was down at the river with his father. I'm glad Hector could get down to the river. He hasn't been too well lately, I hear. No, he has a bad cough. But he can still fish. Her ladyship ought to give him something for that cough. Ah, there you are. I was looking for Fergie. I put him to bed with a cold. I'll just go and see him. Kirsty and I have just decided you'd better give Hector some medicine for his chest. Fergie? Kirsty! I want Kirsty! Medicine for Hector, darling. 
Run along. And then I'll be bringing your ladyship's tea. A nice tea. Run along. Oh, one thing. I was just thinking, wouldn't it be rather fun if you brought Kirsty her tea for a change? As her ladyship pleases. Would that be jolly, darling? Like a sort of, uh, like a sort of charade. One of your games. She'll have to lay very carefully, won't she, Kirsty? We won't give her any hints that if she gets it wrong the first time, she'll have to try again, won't she? Off you go, darling. Down to the kitchen, get Kirsty's tray ready. Okay, darling. You must be tired. I know I am. But we've just got to get it right. Aye, there's a right way and a wrong way to lay a tree like anything else. There, you see. You won't be so bored here. Time won't hang so heavy on your hands. You'll know how to lay trays and how to help Kirsty. It'll be our little secret. When all the other servants are out, we'll play this little game to amuse ourselves, won't we? Like a sort of um, private show art. Well, Kirsty. How is it this time? I'm thinking I need an egg for my tea, if it's not too much trouble for her ladyship. Of course you do. Know. Silly girl. You know, we always have eggs, Glen's for any tea. So why don't you go back to the kitchen and uh, boil Kirsty an egg? Uh, was the tray all right otherwise? Was the tray all right? We'll have to ask our stern little Kirsty here about that, won't we? <coughs> She's the one with the high standards. If her ladyship doesn't mind me mentioning it, the silver could do with a wee polish. Of course her ladyship doesn't mind you mentioning it, Kirsty. That's just what she wants to know. She wants to learn our ways. Well, you hear that, Caroline? Silver polished, an egg with her tea, and uh, a good tray has a flower on it. Yes, Kirsty? A flower. From the garden. Well, not from the shop, sweetheart. We're miles from any shop here. <laughs> That's a real London remark, isn't it, Kirsty? I thought we'd stopped you making remarks like that. We've never needed shop-bought flowers at Glen Street. You see? Kirsty's quite cross with you now, darling. She's so proud of everything here. I wouldn't be surprised if our little Kirsty wasn't just a little willful now. If with her little foot, she just gave you a little push. <laughs> Oh, darling, uh, would you mind? I would be most obliged to her ladyship if she could find her way to clean it up. What? Oh, uh, Miss Daffy, can you do it again? Mm. Come on. I knew you were Kirsty from the bun. You said she was George Brown. Rubbish. <laughs> it was the bun that gave it away, Kirsty's bun. Do you think a bun suits me? What do you think, darling? Do you think a bun suits her? Kirsty has lovely hair. Yes, yeah, she does. She really does. You're quite right for once, darling. Lovely thick hair. Lovely long hair. I tell you what, have you ever seen Kirsty with her hair down? No. Oh, you missed something. Our little Kirsty's awfully proud of her hair. I expect she's been longing to show it to you. I think you never asked. I expect Kirsty's feelings were quite hurt. We'll have to think of a way of making it up to her, won't we? But first of all, let's have your hair down, Kirsty. I thought maybe her ladyship would take it down for herself. That way she could feel for herself just how thick it is. Capital. Trust Kirsty to come up with a brilliant solution like that. Come along, darling. It's quite easy. Why, even I have managed it, and I'm a, a mere male. I don't know anything about long hair. That's just my point. I want you to learn. Her own hair is so sort of short and 
smart, isn't it? I've been meaning to speak to you about it. And perhaps when you understand properly about long hair, you'll even grow your own. Although I doubt if it will ever be as thick as Kirsty's. Come. Now. What do you think, Kist? Has she learned a lesson? Shall we let her go? Oh, I can't go about my work like this, head all over the place. Her ladyship had better learn how to put it up for me again. Then she can do it for me sometimes in the mornings when I'm awful tired myself. No. Yes, darling. No. got beautiful hair. It's wasted in a bun. Ah. Ah, there you are. We were playing games. Charades, you know. It's good to see you all enjoying yourselves. I'm afraid we've made an awful mess. Oh, don't you try to clear it, Mr. Charlie. Glen Strady is so quiet for us to be here. I like to see you enjoy yourselves. It's a Fergus Karma lady, so I bought the punch. Thank you, Kirsty. Ah, then strainy punch. Terrific. Oh, I should be fast asleep soon. Funny how I sleep here hours. But I don't do anything. <laughs> it's the good air. I hate going to bed early. It's so boring. That depends. Thank you. I definitely have more vitality in London. Yes, but don't you find your job in London very exhausting? Darling, at last. How did it go? Any luck? Absolutely fantastic. Went like a bomb. I've got so much exciting news, I don't know where to start. <laughs> but I will start with a surprise. Kirsty, guess who's here? Oh, well, aren't you surprised? I knew he would be back after the meeting. He told me the other night. Oh, he didn't tell me. <laughs> Welcome back. I thought you had to go on to Kiltoran. I wanted it to be a surprise. Oh, it's supposed to be my surprise. It is a surprise to me. We haven't met. Hello. Hello. I'm Charlie Carrington. Torkel. Good to see you. How are you? Hello, we've met. You know, sorry, this is Torkel Mackay, almost my foster brother. Well, he is my foster brother, Kirsty's son. But more important, he's going to be my business partner. <laughs> no, you've had any business north of the border. Uh, that's the point. This is all new. Darling, is it all wonderful? We're going to spend much more time going straight in the future. Oh, if this works out, I'm sure it will, on any decent restaurant around here for 50 miles, <laughs> uh, we'll spend all our time here. What about London? The house? What about dinner plates? Oh, we'll sell that. Oh, the house, I mean. Get something small. Flat. Paid out here. We'll work it out. You'll see. And we'll be up here. <laughs> Don't worry about dinner plates, darling. You always said that was only a hobby. You always said it was only a hobby. I supported myself by it for ages. Well, you certainly won't need to support yourself by it now. We're all going to be terribly rich. <laughs> How magic. I've always wanted to be terribly, terribly rich. <laughs> or You and me and Toko. That's wonderful. It's just that I, I'm used to working. I think you work far too hard, darling. I mean, who needs work when they don't have to? Yeah. Work is such a bore. Uh, has, uh, have you ever actually worked in your life, Annabelle? <laughs> Stop worrying, Davina. Yeah. As for dinner plates, I bet you could easily work up something of the sort up here. Oh, I mean, Kirsty could help you. But, Fergie, it's all so sudden. The possibilities are enormous, Lady Strainy. A little short of enormous. It's been in my mind for some time. Kirsty, you'll look after us, won't you? You'll look after her ladyship for me. Oh, yes, Sir Fergus, it'll be a pleasure to have you. I'll look after her ladyship for you. Fatten her up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mother's always wanted you to spend more time up here, Lady Strainy. This is her dream come true. Mine too, for that matter. Definitely mine. The three of us together at Strainy. 
Just like when we were children. Now, Sir Fergus, you're forgetting her ladyship wasn't here when you were a wee boy. Well, of course she wasn't. I meant Torquil and you and me. And now, Davida, too. She didn't have half such a nice time when she was a child, did you, darling? In that horrid Haywards Eve. <laughs> I didn't actually live in Haywards Eve. Well, dear Haywards Eve, what's the difference? Anyway, <laughs> you always told me you had a miserable childhood. I really envy you coming to live up here. Can I come and stay lots and lots? Yeah, me too. We'll again. come together and get the roses back in our cheeks from horrid, <laughs> dusty London. Splendid. I must say, it's awfully jolly to think of Strainy being lived in properly again. Yeah, it's really oh, great. Yes, I was also thinking, boy, we might have a chat about this restaurant idea of yours. For one thing, I could do with a better outlet for our salmon than just throwing them on the train to London. Oh, we'll work something out, definitely. Good, good. I'll be very happy to talk to you about that, Jock. Terrific talk, Will. Sooner the better. I'm beginning to feel rather lonely and left out of all this. <laughs> no, oh, come on, oh, darling. There's no need to feel left out. <laughs> He's quite right, darling. There's no need to feel left out at all. There'll be masses for you to do. The garden, for example. That definitely needs pulling together since my mother died. Darling, I want you to feel very much involved. As for being lonely... <laughs> After all, we're all three going to share everything, aren't we? Share? Well, the profits, the venture. Mm. <laughs> I don't know much about gardening. Oh, talk will help you there. He knows everything about plants and flowers. Do you? <laughs> well, I should do. My father was Sir James's gardener. Aye, talk will help you, my lady. Will you? I should certainly need help. Especially if Fergie is going to be so busy. Surely. I'll be very glad to help you. That's right. We'll look after you, talk and I. You'll no be lonely at Glen Glenstraining. Glenstraining. Glenstraining.